Hey guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about the differences of the airway between the adults and children. Now, there are going to be occasions when you do treat pediatric patients. Now, the good news is most patients you will treat will either be adult or elderly, mostly elderly. However, when you do treat pediatric patients, you do need to know a little bit about them because they're not just small adults. They're actually um, got their own unique sets of physiology and psychology. And as they grow throughout the different ages, that physiology and psychology changes. So the purpose of this micro lecture is to provide a comparison between the adult and pediatric airways, because actually every aspect is different between pediatrics and adults. So let's take a look at this simplified version of the upper airway. So here's the child's upper airway. Here's the adult's upper airway. First thing you notice is in the child, the tongue is much larger in proportion to the size of the mouth. What that means to you as paramedics is that the child is more likely to have an upper airway obstruction caused by the tongue. So you need to get used to using those smaller OP airways and doing the head tilt chin lift on a child. However, you need to be careful when you do the head tilt chin, chin lift because the cartilage in the, um, the trachea is much weaker and than it is in an adult. So it's not, that, not as, as well formed in a child as it is in an adult, meaning that you can actually hyperextend the airway and cause kinking. I always picture it like a toilet tube when you've got the end of the toilet tube holder and you kink it like that. That's what I always think of when I'm tipping a child's head back. And on many occasions, you just need to rotate the airway open and don't actually even need to tip the head back depending on the age of the child. So what you'll also notice is the pharynx is much smaller as well. So this is the passage down into the trachea. So the passage is much smaller, meaning there's a more likelihood risk of choking and obstruction and hypoxia. The epiglottis is larger and floppier. So in other words, the, the epiglottis that covers the trachea that stops anything apart from air going into the trachea is actually larger and floppier. So let me show you that. So here you have an adult's epiglottis, which is just a flap of cartilage. Here you have the vocal cords, and that's the entrance to the trachea. Here's the same one in a pediatric, much smaller, and the actual uh, epiglottis is what we call horseshoe shaped, and it's actually much larger as well. The, the, the narrowest point of the child's airway is at the cricoid, so the cricothyroid. So you have this larger opening, and then it gets much narrower here, then gets larger again. And the trachea, the, the trachea is relatively narrow and less rigid. So we've already said that it's less rigid because you can kink it like a toilet roll, um, but it's also pretty narrow, meaning that when you're having to ventilate patients, you're using a lot less oxygen and a lot less BVM. So that's a micro lecture of the differences between an adult and a pediatric airway. My name is Sam Willis. I hope you enjoyed the session. You guys take care.